Excellent. Okay. Well, hello, everyone. Um, my name is Ambrose Duba. I am with Everfi, um, and I appreciate the shout out. Um, we are an educational technology company. We have um, supported the state uh, across the state for a number of years, and we are very excited. Um, you saw when Anne was going through the clearinghouse, we had a high school financial literacy resource. We still have that one. Um, it's been updated over time. And then we have an elementary focused resource called Vault. And now we are very happy to be sharing something brand new with you all that just launched this school year. Um, and it is called Future Smart. And the focus is very much so for those middle school students so that for those of you who teach high school, you have continuity, you have a baseline. Uh, they come in to you a little more prepared. Um, so I'm going to dive into who EverFi is, um, how we've been utilized across the state, give you a full rundown of the course, a little history about how it's created and, and what it looks like, um, walk you through registration should you be interested in getting started, and then um, just give you some next steps if you're, if you're interested in bringing it back to your school or, or a colleague or friend. Um, <clears throat> for those of you who don't know us, EverFi, we are, a again, an educational technology company focused on what we consider to be the critical skills, um, 21st century skills that we want our students to go into the world with. Um, so for us, that um, started with financial literacy and has expanded over the years to include um, STEM, diversity, health and wellness, uh, and, and career success. But um, financial literacy is the flagship of our, uh, our programming. It is where most of our partnerships lie. Um, and, and something that is, is very important to us. Um, so just so that you know, um, we are, our resources are free through sponsorship. So we have a number of sponsors, local bank partners in the state of Pennsylvania, um, everyone from Northwest Savings Bank to Beneficial Bank. Um, there's more and more and more. Uh, we are very lucky for their partnerships, and, and typically they work very closely in their communities um, for those high school and elementary um, focused resources. Um, so we, this middle school program is, is a national partnership with Mass Mutual, um, the Mass Mutual Foundation, um, and it is available again completely free uh, across across your state and across the country if you have, you know, your sister teaches that in Florida or something. So, um, just for your awareness, more than 57,000 students are currently utilizing some type of EverFi programming um, in the classroom uh, with between 765 courses. Um, so that is a number, sometimes there are a number of teachers at a school utilizing an EverFi program. Um, our curriculums are again uh, student facing online one-to-one -one so that students have the ability to learn um, in a way that they, they tend to love um, using their devices and things like that but are meant to be a blended learning tool for you to pair it with what you're already doing, um, to enhance what you're already doing, to launch it. So I'll talk about some implementation strategies for you, but just so that you know, this resource was really created for more so the simulation um, of building financial habits so that they can continue to practice them um, into, into high school and into, into their adult lives. So Future Smart is a seven module program, and each of those seven modules is about 30 minutes long. Um, the theme of the resource is very much uh, of a story that the students are the mayor of their town, um, the mayor of Townville, and they work through these modules to make their town the happiest town um, that exists. Um, this simulation, again, um, can be picked up and dropped um, as, as needed. So those seven modules can be once a week for seven weeks. They could be a mini unit. They can be stretched over the course of, of a year. It's really up to you. Um, to, to utilize the resource as, as you need. Um, this is our first resource available in Spanish. So if any of you have used an EverFi program in the past, um, we're moving this direction. We're really um, thankful to be moving in this direction to provide access to everyone. Um, so first resource in Spanish can be changed back and forth really easily at the student level. Um, there's also a companion app for this resource that can reinforce some of the topics that you're teaching in the classroom at home or um, just you know give students another another touch point but you'll see the topic areas there on the right and I'll go more in depth as to what that looks like um, for your for your kids so again I mentioned that the storyline here and and the idea is it's very much a game the students enter um, the and they they select their 
what their mayor looks like. They get a they get to pick and customize an avatar. They get to name their town. Um, and it kicks off with this financial um, personality test where the students identify some uh, values that are of interest to them. Um, they're asked to prioritize three things, and they're, they're given a lot of things. Um, I, I struggled when I took the course to pick which I would prioritize. So it asked me, would you like to buy a house or travel the world, go to college? Um, it just gave you a lot of choices. And then at the end, so in module seven, um, they are asked to reflect upon that. And they're, they build a what we say a blueprint um, for their success. And they say, are those, knowing what I know now, having learned um, all those, sub, those subject areas, are those still the three priorities that are of, of most interest to me? Um, and then modules two through um, six, are the direct instruction modules where the students are, again, working through that simulation of helping address those real world financial choices um, for each of the, their town people. So they start, they progress kind of by age also. So module two is like the youngest town person um, and then they get a little older. Uh, there's a, an entrepreneur who has a pet shop business and they, they help, again, make those financial choices and, and keep their town um, happy. So. Just so that you all know, um, I, I, I'm not behind this, this research or insight. I work directly with schools every day, but um, our curriculum and product team, they're very plugged into what kids like, um, what will lead to the most impact, what will uh, stick. So when we were building this course, um, the intention really was um, to make sure that students' feedback was, was taken into consideration, as well as teacher feedback, of course. Um, so the modules were created to be, well, when, when this all started, um, we actually worked with a, um, a company to help bring in and focus group of um, some students. Um, and these students were from diverse backgrounds, from um, different income levels, um, to, to make sure that it was representative of, of the students we see across the state and, and the country. Um, and the students were presented with all of these concepts and what we found really resonated um, with them was, was being the town mayor um, and having that personalization and being, um, I don't know if it was the power or, <laughs> um, but they, they also had a lot of empathy. They really wanted to help others. Um, so this is, we learned this was really important to them um, and we took this into consideration um, when designing the course and, and to ensure that, again, that stickiness. Um, so even one of the modules, uh, that first one where module two that was on the last screen, they're customizing David's room on a budget. So they go shopping, um, they're asked to use a coupon, they're asked to update his room to be less uh, young and, and more in his style. And they're given a lot of choices and they actually still get to customize it themselves, but they're helping, again, they're helping someone else. Um, these are just our, our strategies that, that we build into our, our programming. Um, and, and a lot of what is behind our course philosophy is really elements of, of game design. So these are the things that, uh, again, we know kids are interested in. Um, so uh, one of them, um, we talked about the customization, but um, that, that narrative piece. So um, having a strong story um, got to the emotional, gets to the emotional side of learning for, for kids. and. Um, they take away more from the content when, when that storyline exists. Um, also that progression piece. So I, I have mentioned that in modules two through six, um, those are so more so the direct instruction. Um, students are also scored in those modules. So you all as teachers get some data. Um, there are 10 question post assessments at the end of each of the modules. So for students, one, as they progress through their um, they know how far they have left to go. There's an endpoint. They know where they stand um, in that context of the endpoint, and, and that intrinsic motivation is built. And also, um, there's that scoring, and they can monitor that, and you as the educator can also monitor that. Uh, and the last thing is, the, is feedback. So um, we are very much a, a ground game education program. Um, there are four um, four schools managers we were called um, in the state who work with your county is on the west side, on the east side, every a whole state is covered by someone who is local um, and can be there and meet with you all. Um, and we take that feedback really um, critically and to heart and we make sure that that's um, invested in our programs over time. And the same can be said 
of students. We know that students need that regular feedback. We know that that's something you're providing them. So we provide that to them as well built in the program. And then um, we take your feedback into consideration um, as well over time. All right, so I'm going to keep going here. You'll see on the screen that there's an example of that Spanish, and this is a, them getting that feedback. And then in the top left corner, there's that happiness meter for their town. All right, so a course overview here. So this is a more so a deep dive, but Hillary mentioned that at the beginning that there are some um, curriculum resources that she uploaded so that you all have a full curriculum guide, which will go into everything that I'm sharing with you as well as um, more so the student learning objectives, but this just gives you an overview of what's covered within each of the seven modules. Um, students can take modules. Once you've taken module one, you can take two, three, four, five, or six in any order. I would say most of our students are, or I'm sorry, our teachers are progressing through, um, but we know that you all have a set curriculum or you have something that you're going on, a scope and sequence, so if, if five is where you want to start after you've set their core values, you, you have the, the flexibility to do so. Um, a lot of questions that we receive is how do students access this? So if they're, if it connects to the internet, if it's updated, it should work. Um, so any device really should, should be um, uh, functioning. Um, the companion app also exists, I mentioned this, it's just a supplement um, to extend those lessons. Again, I think it's really great maybe to have some parent involvement and they can have some conversations about what they're learning and um, it's really short 14 little modules and that's available um, and, and it's not a requirement. The students aren't like already registered for this program if they take, I'm sorry, this app if they take the program within your course, but it, it exists. Um, these are just some screenshots that I can share with you. Um, they're looking at Trevor's budget. This is module three. Um, he is taking a trip and he's asked to make a lot of choices. Uh, there are some, again, some, the vocabulary is highlighted here and it's all audio enabled. So the students are hearing what's um, being said at some capacity on the screen. Um, we also provide the transcripts and things like that if, you are, if your students need them in closed captioning. Um, but here's an example of how this is very much so customized to what your students are, are doing one-to-one. -one. So um, one of your students may say, I'd rather drive to work and I'm going to pay that on my debit card. And, one of your students may say, I'm going to take the bus and do that with cash. So it's very much so their choice and, and customized to, to um, the decisions and, and what they've learned and how they apply it. So the benefits to sponsorship. So again, Mass Mutual Foundation um, sponsors this state and nationwide. Um, this curriculum is available at no cost to you all. There is a, a, someone is paying for it um, and that the reason for that is it allows us the ability to provide you all with high quality content. Um, again, you, there are four schools managers across your state that can meet with you, meet with your colleagues, um, help and be around if anything ever went wrong, um, and, and we can improve it over time. Um, and then you also have that, um, you can gauge that impact. We can provide back to your, to your school or district um, how students did from start to finish using that pre and post assessment data. Um, and there's also some surveys uh, if your students are above the age of 13. Um, and then Mass Mutual is also providing some scholarship contests. So we run that through EverFi as a blog competition, uh, and your students can earn, if they're certified in the program, earn um, $100, not 100 that wouldn't matter too much to them, would it? $1,000, um, 529 scholarship. Um, school profile. So just, I want to be able to kind of make this fit in your mind. So um, I highlighted three three uh, districts that we're working with, three middle schools, I'm sorry, and um, from Allegheny County over outside of Pittsburgh um, to Erie and, and to Lehigh. Um, and there are many ways. We totally leave that up to you all as the experts um, to what makes sense. Um, but I would say business, education, uh, computer technology, and social studies are probably our three major um, utilization spots. Um, but again, your schools have unlimited licenses for both students and teachers to implement um, how best makes sense to you. So what does teacher um, access and registration look like? So we have a very um, simple registration process where students, I'm sorry, teachers, go to everfi.com slash login and click the blue register button in the bottom right corner. Um, Hillary also uploaded a, what we call a quick start guide that will walk you through all of this. 
Um, and also, I'm available, our, my colleagues are available to do webinars to meet with you in person um, and, and make sure that, that this, this goes well for you as you register. And then you select the, the teacher button there. You can search for your state and your school. If they're not listed, you can um, actually fill out a form that will connect back to one of us so that we can help you get started if your school's not in there. Um, you create a teacher profile. This is what your login information will be moving forward. Uh, and you will select the course called Future Smart. So you want to be sure to select Future Smart. Um, we have another program called Future Goals, which can get confusing. So Future Smart is the one that you want. You'll agree to terms of service, and then you have a teacher dashboard. So this is what your dashboard looks like. Um, it has um, the ability to view the course, which is a, a direct demo that you can access at any time. Um, we work on a code system for our classes, so you would create individual class codes for each section of students that you see, very similar to Google Classroom and Enmodo. Um, each section of students you have, again, you'll have that access to those classes and codes. They won't go anywhere if you don't write them down. They'll live on your dashboard. Um, you can also manage them, um, hide them, should you see students on like a semester basis. Um, and then you have reports. The reports are, again, those 10 question post assessments. Our threshold for passing is a seven out of 10 or higher. Students can retake assessments if they do not pass the assessment the first time. Um, you can also monitor the number of times they take the assessment. You can see the timestamp. You can see the score. Um, that will be under this view button on the left hand side here. Uh, and then on the right hand side, you'll see this are they certified, yes or no. So certification means a student passed all five of the Future Smart modules with a seven out of 10 or higher. So all green scores and they actually earn a certificate, that certification in financial literacy, which many of our students take pride in. Some of our students who don't earn um, certification in other areas are especially proud. Um, you can also download your scores here. You can change between your classes fairly easily. Uh, the students tab, so there's two ways for students to register, one being that they register themselves using that code. The other is we have a new mass upload feature, so this is an, a newer feature for EverFi in the last, uh, last school year. Uh, and you can download a CSV file, upload all of your student accounts in one fell swoop. Um, should someone uh, forget their password, um, I know that's not a reality in any of your world, um, or should they be funny and create a name like, like Harry Potter here, um, you are able to change it. Um, if they change sections, you are able to bump them around. Uh, all of that is here. Uh, and last but certainly not least, resources. So I, one thing I, I failed to mention uh, is that we provide a lot of additional content for our courses, um, lesson plans for each module, so seven additional lesson plans, reflection questions that are built into the course that you can um, take to journals or other things if you'd like to, um, all the assessments that are built into the course you have access to, the um, not only the questions but the answers. If you have a student who needs to take the paper-based version uh, or you have a student who is having lacking success online and needs to take it in front of you, those types of things, you have the, the opportunity there. You can also um, always build those into your own exit tickets and, and um, your own assessments as needed. Um, and then last but certainly not least, on the right-hand side here are just some tips and tricks and then contact information for whomever is your local go-to. Um, so I've, I've mentioned these, these um, ghost colleagues. Here they are. Um, we have Alyssa um, out of Pittsburgh. Alan and Jamie are both out of Greater Philly. Uh, and then I am working solely in the state, or I'm sorry, in the county of Burke County um, right now and also the state of Maryland. So you may notice that I'm not your school's manager, but please um, feel free to contact me should you ever need um, anything at all. Uh, this is me. I'm amber at everfi.com. I'm hard to um, lose if you if you have my email address. Um, and again, you will have a schools manager assigned to your region, and they're more than happy to schedule some time to to speak with you further in depth, or, or again, sit down with you and, and help you get started. Um, we've had some questions about our, our resources, our older resources for our high school students. Um, so this is a course that's been around in the state for a number of years. We also, again, have that elementary school resource um, that are available and listed on the Jumpstart Clearinghouse. Uh, and then I will open it up to any questions um, here and just, again, put the Future Smart page back up so that you can see it. 
Amber, thank you so much. That was a fantastic presentation. Um, I do have um, at least one question that's already come in, and I encourage our participants with other questions to go ahead and pose them in the questions tab. Um, but the first one we have here is, I work with struggling readers, so I was wondering, do you have to read the information throughout the game, or is it or can it be read to you? Great question. So all of our resources are fully audio enabled, um, which means headphones are important to your world. Um, students are uh, fantastic at all hitting the start button one second off of each other. Um, so it will support that. We also cater to the lower end of our reading levels typically. So um, this resource will be more so around the, the strong fifth and sixth grade level. Um, and and so forth um, with our high school programs too. We we typically cater to the, to the lower end of things. Uh, we want it to be accessible to them. Um, again, there's also that those um, annotated. I'm not sorry, um, the transcript so that you can um, annotate them if you need to and, and work through those in advance with any of your students. Or um, the vocabulary guides are really extensive and and maybe of good support for you to pick and choose some of the the vocabulary that will be covered within the module and maybe um, provide them a lot of that priming. All right. Hillary, are you still there? Sorry, I forgot to unmute myself. <laughs> We've got another question there coming in for you, Amber. Um, uh, so thank you for the presentation. She wanted to make sure that homeschooling parents um, are able to use your site as well, or is this only accessible to those who are in, say, a, a public or private or parochial setting? You know, I've not yet had that question. I would be willing to argue that you are more than welcome and you should just submit um, that when you go to click register and ask can't find my school go ahead and select that um, and then depending on where you are it's going to put you in touch with Alan or Alyssa or Jamie and they will be able to help you get set up. Awesome. Um, another question came in is it possible to view a demonstration mode without committing um, as, a, as a school to, to use the program? There, yes, there, is, um, there are two ways we can do this. One would be um, for you to register an account at your school and then use that, de that view course button that is on the account level. Um, and then you wouldn't need to register a class or anything in order to do that. Um, there's no like commitment though from you all as a school or district. You are um, welcome to try it out and say, you know what, this is not for me and just let your school's manager know. Um, the other way is we can create a sample account um, that we can send over to you and you could play with it um, completely from the student perspective in advance. And um, if you want to shoot me an email at amber at everfi.com, I can set that up for you. Fantastic. Um, don't see any other questions coming in. Was there anything that um, sort of came for you, Amber, as a follow-up from any of those? Or um, I'll see if anybody else has any last-minute questions. I'm scrolling back through. <laughs> Um, I no, I thank you all again so much for having me and um, be sure to check out the, the additional resources we uploaded um, because those will definitely walk through any any um, questions you may have about the, the program. Great. And just as a reminder for our folks that are on the line, uh, those are in the handouts uh, section of the webinar. And uh, once the webinar is, is closed, or for anybody that's listening to the recorded version, they will be uh, available on our website. So um, we'll make sure that we make those available to folks um, uh, following the, the webinar as well. All right, well, thank you, Amber. really appreciate uh, you taking the time to, to join us tonight and for sharing that fantastic information. It was a, a wonderful overview of the, of the new program as well as the um, uh, uh, information on the other programs that EverFi offers.